I applied to 257 internships. Here's how and what I learned. The agenda for today's video is pretty simple. First, I'll talk about my process with how I found all these internships to apply to and how I was able to apply to so many. Then a quick section about if it was worth it or not. Then a couple of key lessons that I learned as I was applying to all of these internships, how I do it again, and finally, should you do it? So first, how did I do it? Well, after my freshman year, I was very insecure and very determined to get a good internship to show off to my friends. Around late August, right before school began, I started to Google search software engineering summer internships and applying to everyone that I could find. I applied to almost every single open opening that I came across. First, I filtered by location for my hometown for Seattle, and then just nationwide. I didn't really care where I was applying because this was my first internship. I just wanted a place to work. And after a few weeks, after I felt like I'd exhausted every single listing on Google, I turned to LinkedIn. And LinkedIn has a ton of open jobs available just through the search bar at the top of the page. And there were a lot of overlapping applications from Google, but there were also a lot of new ones that I took and applied to. Throughout this time period, I got so used to creating new Workday accounts for every single application application, uh, uploading my resume, and then having to input that same information back into the Workday application. Honestly, it's a bit mind-boggling to me now that I had to go and do that every single time. I never understood why they couldn't just save my information and plug it all in for me. If you've ever applied to a bunch of jobs before, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, and you'll know how annoying it can be. And because of this, I only did a couple quick searches every single day, found maybe five to ten different openings, maybe even less, and decided to apply to those on that day, but no more. And the reason why I did this was just to avoid burnout, because even though every application only takes a few minutes, it can get really frustrating to apply and apply and apply. So by just doing five to 10 every single day, I was still able to get a lot of applications done throughout a longer time frame. And I did this almost every day from around mid-August to mid-October when I got my first offer. And after I got my first offer, the pressure really lifted off my shoulders and I stopped applying. The next section is just about if it was worth it or not. And in my opinion, yes, it was so, so worth it. After I got my recruiting situation squared away in my sophomore year, I've never had to think about it for the rest of my college career. That has been such an incredible blessing for me because in my head, if you don't have a job, that's the number one priority for you in college. But once you have that job lined up already, you can focus on other issues in your life that are, in my opinion, more meaningful. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about a couple of key lessons I learned while applying to so many internships. Here's the first lesson. You're going to get rejected a bunch of times. Throughout my college career, I've been referred to Google twice, Facebook once, and Microsoft three times. I've also been rejected by Google twice, Facebook once, and Microsoft three times. Yeah, every single time that I've applied to one of these companies, I've gotten completely rejected, not even given a chance. Even after having my Amazon internships on my resume, I still wasn't even able to get past the resume screen. These companies have their algorithms for their resume parsing, and those algorithms didn't even think I was worthy enough to receive a automated assessment. And because I go to Carnegie Mellon and I worked at Amazon before, I had a couple of inherent advantages over the other applicants, but I still wasn't able to make it past the screen. So yeah, you're gonna get rejected a bunch, a bunch of times, and it's completely natural. It does hurt every time you open up an email that starts off with unfortunately we have gone with other applicants but it's a completely necessary and normal part of the application process here's the second lesson that goes hand in hand with the first lesson and it's that it only takes one offer I applied to over 250 internships out of all of those applications I only got three offers three offers that's barely more than a 1% acceptance rate I had to apply to over 80 applications just to get one offer but at the same time it's still two offers more than I could possibly take. That is, unless you do two internships at the same time, but that's a pretty risky thing to do. Anyways, it doesn't matter if you've been rejected a dozen times, a hundred times, or even a thousand times. Each application is its own, and as annoying as it is to continuously fill out your information on every application, it also signifies that each application is independent, and that just because you may have had rejections in the past, it doesn't mean that you won't get an offer in the future. So just keep trying. The third lesson is this. Apply all you want, but if your resume is no good, you won't get an offer. This is the piece of advice that I wish I took more seriously. I spent hundreds of hours both applying to internships and working on my interview preparation through LeetCode, but how many hours did I put into working on my resume? Maybe one hour, and that's being pretty generous. And the result was that I got maybe five interviews out of the 250 applications that I sent out. Like I said before, I go to Carnegie Mellon and I've worked at Amazon before, and I still got rejected a bunch of times. Now, why is that? I feel like the average person who goes to Carnegie Mellon and has worked at Amazon before shouldn't have too much 
much trouble getting interviews at many companies. It's not because I'm unlucky or the world hates me for some reason. It's just because my resume was not good enough to pass the resume screeners. Because my resume wasn't optimized and filled with all of the proper keywords, I couldn't get past the resume screeners, even with the referrals that I had. So with that in mind, if you're going to be spending hundreds of hours trying to get an internship, make sure you spend an adequate amount of time working on your resume so that doesn't become your bottleneck. The fourth lesson is simple, and it's just to start early. Companies like Amazon are well known to process applications on a rolling basis, and once it gets to the point where their internship positions are filled out around early spring, all of the qualified applicants are still pushed through the recruitment cycle, but if they're qualified enough to receive an offer, they're instead placed on the wait list. This means that even if you were qualified enough to work at Amazon, you might end up without a summer internship just because you applied late. As a result, it's really important to start applying early so the internship applications that you're applying to don't fill up all of their positions by the time you're done recruiting for them. Okay, so with all of these key learnings, how would I go about doing it again? Honestly, I wouldn't change too much. Getting your first internship is really, really hard no matter where you go to school. So applying everywhere like I did was kind of necessary. There are companies that will take you even if you have very little to no experience. You just have to go out and find them and apply to them. I thought my process of applying to just a couple of internship applications a day worked out well for me and it worked out well primarily because I started early enough to where even though I took a couple months to apply to all of these internships, I was still able to send out hundreds before the month of October. One of the things though that I would change that I mentioned before is spending more time on my resume. My resume was very bare bones and I only had a couple personal projects on there, but I still think I deserved more interviews than I got for the amount of applications that I sent out. I worked hard on my leak code skills and spent dozens of hours applying to these internships. I should have put more effort into crafting the best resume possible because your resume is a company's first look into who you are as an applicant. And they base a lot of decisions on the information you present in your resume. The last section of this video is if you should do the same thing that I did. If you watched my lead code video, you'll know how much effort I put into finding a software engineering internship. You should also know that coding isn't easy. And just because software engineering jobs pay a pretty penny, it doesn't mean you're going to enjoy it when you have to spend 40 to 50 hours a week every single week on it. I can't answer whether or not software engineering is for you, but I urge you to think about if you really enjoy doing it before you dive in head first. Because in my opinion, I think a lot of people get sort of blindsided by the money and don't really see anything further than that. Okay, that's enough for me for one day. If you enjoyed what you saw, and if you're curious about what my resume actually looked like when I was first applying to internships, click this video right here.